I'm Allen Dale's Chief Meteorologist Ryan Martin with a look at your midday weather update. Current surface analysis across the country shows our moisture is slowly working its way to the northeast. Interestingly here, we have seen the moisture coverage over Missouri drop quite a bit in the past few hours. What this probably tells me is we're seeing some warmer, drier air getting churned into the mix here probably sets the stage for a better thunderstorm outbreak potential later this afternoon into this evening across Illinois and I'd say up into uh, parts of western Indiana and back down still into parts of Missouri. The moisture is still there. The low is still there. Right now I would say the moisture is moving a little too fast. The low is still holding back near Enid, Oklahoma. So there might be a little bit of disconnect between the first push of moisture and what's coming with the low. We're also seeing an advance of this low to the north in the western part of the Dakotas. This is the system that's bringing in the colder air in the days ahead. So all of this doesn't make me change the overall thought process for the Corn Belt. I still think between now and let's just say the end of the day Thursday, we're going to be seeing moisture over a good chunk of the Corn Belt. If we get it up into the upper Midwest in in, say, Wisconsin and Minnesota, I think we're going to be lucky. I'm looking more for an 80% coverage from those areas southward. But still, let's not rule it out. But I think we're going to be seeing probably half to one, one and a half inch rainfall totals. The heaviest rains, I believe, will still be from the Boot Heel of Missouri across the Ohio River Valley, southern third of Illinois, southern third of Indiana, back into that southeast Missouri area. So that's kind of the way we're setting things up. There's nothing going on right now on the current surface analysis that makes me change change my mind on timing or amount as the system comes through where we have to kind of zero in then is what happens behind that weather system and for that you look at the extended model looks here and we see still some fairly significant cold air working its way down across the region as we go through the next couple of weeks. For example, we get this frontal complex to move through, oh, let's say tomorrow through Thursday. Behind it, we've got cold air that dives southward across the entire Corn Belt, well below normal temperatures on Friday. As a matter of fact, I think Friday's temperatures could rival in parts of the Corn Belt what we saw on Monday and might even be colder than what we saw Monday in places like uh, the southern Corn Belt. We'll see that cold air stick around through the weekend, and we see a big push upward again, or at least a minor push upward as we start next week. The next weather system that we have to watch, I believe, comes through midweek next week. Call it an April Fool's Day system. Has some decent moisture with it, probably a half inch or so. And as it moves through, we'll see warmer air first and another push of major cold air. At this point, I don't think next week's cold air matches quite what we expect this Friday and Saturday. That's a, a delineation I've made now in my forecast. We had been concerned that it could be just as cold. Now I think this weekend probably takes the cake. And then we'll follow that up with another system trying to come through for Easter weekend. Right now, models seem to want to push it back just a bit into the south just a bit so that most of the Corn Belt will wait to see moisture until probably Sunday night, then through Monday and even into early Tuesday. That moisture looks like it could be formidable. A secondary wave coming across Iowa, Minnesota, and then the central Corn Belt as we go from Monday night through Tuesday. That system right there, that wave alone could have half to one inch rainfall totals with it. So we'll see if it comes to fruition. Basically what we're saying here is after being so dry for a good chunk of the month of March, we'll probably start April off on a little bit more active note. At this point, I do think the GFS rainfall totals are probably overdoing it just a little bit. So if you see maps that are touted as being the GFS forecast, it's probably overdone. But I still think we have good moisture coming. So all the talk about the early plant, well, we're going to have to dodge some showers. And you know what? The cold air is not really going to go away completely until we get after the 10th. Now, I do see a very active storm track coming, Big Ridge, trying to expand over the eastern part of the country after April the 10th. And so I think we'll see those temperatures react accordingly. But between now and the 10th, we're definitely going to be playing more days below normal than we're playing above. International weather, one thing I really want to bring up, uh, good rains, fantastic rains looking to develop as we finish out uh, the weekend and go through the first half of next week over Western Australia. We're getting closer and closer to wanting to put the crop on the ground out there. Some are already working on it at least. Western Australia getting anywhere from a half to three inches of rain over almost all of their wheat areas. Uh, most of the wheat in Australia is divided into three little areas. Uh, one's Western Australia, one's the southern part of South Australia, the province, and then uh, New South Wales down into Victoria. The New South Wales, Victoria, South Australia area is not picking up as much rain, but Western Australia, which is notoriously dry at times, Looks like it's picking a nice little bump of moisture here in the forecast as we go longer term. Now, will we follow it up with more? That's yet to be seen. 
But if guys are waiting for some moisture to put the crop in, that probably is the period there that they're going to be looking at. South American weather becoming less of a factor here. We're hearing some talk of dryness in second crop corn areas. This is the area that was too wet to get second crop corn in a couple weeks ago. And to me, just looking at it on a daily basis, the pattern doesn't look like it's changed much. So if you're dry now, were you really too wet a couple weeks ago? That's the question on my mind. Still looks to me like a good part of Brazil's soybean areas and then the second crop corn areas are in line to pick up anywhere from oh, one to two inches of rain over the next 10 days. It doesn't come all at once, but there's moisture around. Shouldn't be a major problem there. And then down into Argentina, looking at a slightly drier push here, but that's probably not too bad of a deal overall that's the way your forecast is stacking up if you've got any questions on the weather give us a call at allendale i'm chief meteorologist ryan martin